ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಚಿಮಿರಂಧಸ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನೀಲಿತ ಯೇನ ಥಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಟ್ ಇಸ್ಕಾನ್ ಸೈಲನ್ ಭೂಮಿ ಪೂಜ ವಾಸ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅರ್ಸ್ ಭೂಮಿ ಪೂಜ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅರ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ criticized by different classes of people grossly atheistic people will uh, reject this as the most foolish superstition and persons uh, just like christians and muslims they will consider this blasphemous we should only worship god no one else not and uh, people without proper knowledge may consider this worship of the earth as was conducted here today to be something like the uh religious activities conducted by aboriginal people who who worship earth trees and stones and like that and it's a common accusation against what is called hinduism of being polytheistic worshiping many gods and worshiping stones trees earth ri- rivers and so on uh but actually the uh worship conducted by vaishnavas is it it's quite different from that of uh although they are just like we may what may be called aborigines may worship in a very primitive way trees and stones and rivers and the earth the vaishnavas also do but the uh, aboriginal people who or common people who do so with very little understanding uh th- their mode of worship is quite different from that of the vaishnavas which is based on a uh, deep philosophical understanding but actually even though the gross materialists scoff at the aboriginal people for worshiping trees and stones and rivers and the earth and so on uh, actually the position of the aboriginal people is better than that of the gross materialists modern man is uh, has become what he considers to be very advanced by exploiting nature drilling the earth exploding the earth to make to uh make mines and quarries damming the rivers putting chemicals in the soil to produce extra crops and it's just coming to the attention of the world leaders that what an ecological mess all this so-called progress has produced but the people who they considered to be backward uh who worshiped the stones and the trees uh, they actually had a much more advanced understanding because they understood that uh nature is not simply some forces some ke- chemical biological and physical forces but there is a uh, spirit inherent in everything so they were very uh careful to uh only take from nature as much as they needed and not to unnecessarily anger the spirits of the trees and the earth and the sky and of everything so even though they they didn't have any deep theology but they but even their rudimentary knowledge of spirit uh it was far more advanced than those of the gross materialists who deny the existence of spirit but again the vaishnava understanding is it's it's not just a vague understanding of spirit but a complete understanding the vaishnavas understand that there are many uh spirits or subtle subcontrollers but uh, nevertheless uh, vaishnavism is not polytheistic or mm. but recognizes that krishna is the supreme personality of god is the supreme controller of everything So Vaishnavas also worship stones, rivers, trees, and the earth, but all in relation to Krishna. Vaishnavas 
worship stones, but not any stone. They worship Shalagram Shila, Govardhan Shila, Dwarka Shila. These are stones who are the Supreme Personality of Godhead in that form. They worship Radha Gokula Ananda, who appear in the form of stone. And again, people who have stone hearts and dull heads, they cannot understand that the Archa Vigraha is Krishna, is the Supreme Lord. And Vaishnavas worship trees, especially um, Tulasi. In Vaishnav Shastra, the worship of the Vatavriksha, Amalaki, this is also mentioned, although it's not commonly actually performed. The rivers, uh, there's especially the, uh, there are certain sacred rivers, Ganga, Yamuna, Kaveri, there are certain rivers, they're understood to be uh, great devotees of Krishna and therefore they are worshipped. So like this, there's some example of how certain stones, trees, and rivers are worshipped uh, either because they're directly Krishna or because they're great devotees of Krishna. But uh, a Vaishnav sees Krishna in everything and everything in Krishna and therefore doesn't necessarily, doesn't unnecessarily destroy or damage anything. Our uh, Srila Prabhupada, he was very particular that he didn't want any trees cut, even when temples were to, to be constructed on a property. That's why uh, if you visit our, uh, or, or the ISKCON center in Juhu, in Mumbai, Vasugoshpur was just speaking about that, and in Vrindavan, you'll find in the courtyard of both of them, there are trees, in the temple, right in the temple courtyard. Those trees are there because... They were there before the property was acquired for constructing a temple. And Srila Prabhupada insisted that the, the trees remain, even when the temple is constructed, that the, they re, can remain right in the courtyard, not that they should be uh, removed. So uh, regarding Bhumi Puja, uh, well, this is a, a, a special function that is performed um, for the, before the construction of particularly of a temple. But actually, uh, Bhumi is always worshipable. She, uh, when, we, when we say earth, we, well, we just think of just some soil. But just as uh, Ganga, we worship her as a river, but uh, she also, she's, she's a river who is a Devi, a goddess. So uh, the earth is not just earth as we see but she is also a goddess and she is uh, particularly the wife of Lord Vishnu uh, in the, she was accepted as the wife of Lord Vishnu in oh. his uh, Varaha avatar and uh, she is one of the uh, principal shaktis of the Supreme Lord Vishnu generally uh, just like at the Tayar Sanniti, so that's understood to be Sri, but the Lord also has his Bhu and Nila Shaktis. So Bhu Shakti, that is Satya Bhama, wife of Krishna, and in Gaur Lila, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we're supposed to speak on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Lila, so here we are, Chaitanya Lila, that is Vishnu Priya Devi. So Bhu Shakti expands herself as the earth planet and she uh, is one of the mothers of every person. The, the earth is our mother because she gives us uh, everything that we, re she supports us, gives us food and everything that we require for existence. So she's considered our mother. The mother is always worshipable, even though we treat her in a very familiar way. It's natural to treat one's mother in a very familiar way, but at the same time we have to remember that she is uh, worshipable. So the earth we treat in a very familiar way. We walk on her, we sit on her, we lie down on her. We may, uh, I mean, nowadays we have a different system, but traditionally people, they also urinate and defecate on the earth. 
But as a mother, she tolerates all of this. She doesn't become angry. And traditionally in Vedic culture, when one wakes up in the morning before placing his feet on the ground, he'll pray to Mother Earth that you please forgive me, even though you are worshipable by me, but as a matter of practicality, I have to place my feet upon you. So in this way, the Vaishnav sees everything in relation to Krishna. And everything is worshipable because it's in relation to Krishna. But particularly, this uh, Bhumi Puja is performed for the establishment of a temple. Although the whole earth is sacred, uh, some places are considered especially sacred. Some areas may be considered impure also. Although it, it, generally the earth it is worshipable, but uh, just by uh, association with some bad elements, then some places may be considered impure. But wherever a temple of Vishnu is established, the whole area becomes a tirtha. So as we just heard, and as we know, Tamil Nadu is famous as a state of many temples. So there are many famous holy places in Tamil Nadu. Of course, uh, Sri Rangam is there, the, mo- the biggest temple. In, I mean, the whole area, in terms of the whole area of the temple or the prakarams. Uh, well, it might have been. Tirupati, of course, is not officially in Tamil Nadu, but uh, it's in the same spiritual area, we can say. Kanchi is famous as a temple town. Chennai has an ancient and famous temple of Vishnu, Partha Sarati Mandir. And although we don't generally think of Ch- Chennai as a very holy place, the very fact that the Lord is residing there actually makes the whole area purified. So Salem is also about to have a, a very important temple. So certainly we should uh, worship the ground on which that temple is to be established. That worship is uh, particularly for calling uh, Ananta Shesha, Adhara Shakti, or the, the, the power for holding everything, in which everything rests. That rests in Balaram Ananta Shesha. Srila Prabhupada explains that what is described in modern science as the energy of gravity is described in Shastra as Balaram's Adhara Shakti, Mahavishnu's Adhara Shakti, or, or uh, what's the word they use? Accommodating potency. And uh, a similar function is performed by the earth, Dharana Shakti. The, the two words are uh, very similar. Dharana yeah. means to, to hold, to support. So Ananta Shesh is a, a, an expansion of Balaram, who is Krishna himself, but in another form. And he serves Krishna in all ways possible. But he expands himself into many forms for all the paraphernalia that Krishna uses. Most famously, as Ananta, he is Ananta Shayana, or the bed on which Lord Vishnu rests. But he also uh, expands as the shoes of the Lord, the umbrella, the Brahmana thread. And uh, as the whole spiritual world is expanded from Balaram Shakti. So the temple of the Lord, of Lord Vishnu, that is the spiritual world manifested within the material world. So we uh, invite Lord Ananta Shesha that you please be present and uphold this temple and uphold our bhakti. Balaram, his name means strength. So he gives strength to the spiritual strength to devotees so that they may serve Krishna. Shakti, the very word, gives, it's, it suggests bala, or the, the two words are interlinked. Power, power and energy, strength and energy. So the jiva by nature is very weak. And is always, in the material world, is always dominated by the maya shakti of the Supreme Lord. When he takes strength from Balaram, then he becomes uh, eligible to uh, serve Krishna, even within the material atmosphere. 
So, uh, building a temple, it is uh, quite different from building any other kind of building. Not just because the design is different, but because the purpose is wholly different. Especially a temple that's built by pure devotees for the worship of Krishna. Pure devotees means those who establish a temple not for their own name and fame, but for broadcasting Krishna's name and fame, which is unlimited. Another of the functions of Ananta is to constantly glorify Krishna with unlimited mouths. But because the foolishness of the conditioned souls is also practically unlimited, they have no taste for hearing about Krishna. The pure devotees establish temples of Krishna in this world to broadcast the unlimited glories of Krishna for the sake of the conditioned souls. So now the temple is, uh, construction will begin very soon. We pray by the mercy of Ananda Dev. And there's, uh, there'll be dis discussion, not only discussion, but practically of collecting funds, organizing artisans and craftsmen and masons and laborers. As in building any other major building, it's, uh, it requires organization, money. But this temple cannot be built only with money and organization. The force behind building this temple must be the, the bhakti or the desire of the devotees to glorify Krishna. Most construction that goes on in the world today is uh, fueled or driven by the profit motive. But devotees, they build temples to glorify Krishna. Bhakti is the motive. So we pray to Lord Balaram and Antashesh to uh, uphold the construction, make it, keep it very firmly in place, and to keep us, who are the servants who are to serve within the temple, very firmly fixed in devotional service. That as we deal with money and materialistic people, that we not become uh, influenced in a materialistic way, that we remain fixed in our purpose of serving Krishna by this temple. We see that um, many uh, extraordinary temples have been built here in, in Tamil Nadu especially for the purpose of glorification of the Supreme Lord. It is very sad to see that in the modern age, the uh, mostly the... They're, be, they're being misused for personal motives. So we pray that we not uh, fall from the exalted standard of devotional service to using these temples for our petty sense gratification. So that requires uh, spiritual strength. We pray to Lord Balaram, Nityananda, Ananta Shesh to give us that strength and maintain us in that position. Just as the temple should stand firm and strong forever, so should the uh, determination in our hearts to serve Krishna remain firm and strong forever. That is possible by taking strength from Lord Balaram. Today the Bhumi Puja has been formed, but every day, at every moment, at every step, we should worship the servants of the Supreme Lord, of course, it may seem strange saying that every step we should perform Bhumi Puja because by w placing our feet on the earth, that means that every step, it's, it appears to be just the opposite of Puja. Worship means we have to bow down our head. And just the opposite of that is, the, is to kick someone in the head. But if we place our feet on the earth, is that not then the greatest insult? But actually it's a fact that the non-devotees, by uh, misusing the human form of life, they uh, commit offense to the earth at every step. Still she's very tolerant as a mother. But the earth feels very pleased at the touch of the feet of the pure devotees. She's very happy to uh, support the pure devotees whose only motive is to serve who she serves namely Krishna. So by, of course, we don't physically perform Bhumi Puja except on certain very special occasions. But by worshipping Krishna, 
uh, then all the various demigods and the, the shaktis of Krishna who are present in this world, they all become completely satisfied. Yatataramula Nishe Chanena Tripyanti Yatskandha Bhujopashaka Pranopaharachcha Yatindrianam Tataiva Sarvahana Machuteja. Just as by placing food in the stomach all the limbs of the body are nourished, and just as by watering the root of the tree, all the branches, twigs, leaves, fruits, flowers, they're also nourished. In the same way, by worshipping Krishna, who is the root of all existence, everyone else becomes satisfied. So, although Vaishnavas may, on special occasions, they, they may worship Bhumi Devi, Ganga Devi, daily they worship Tulasi Devi, but the center of the worship is Krishna. By worshipping him, everyone is satisfied. The gross materialists, they cannot understand this. Uh, practically, although they decry any kind of worship, but practically they, they also worship matter. They're, they're concerned with matter and how to enjoy and exploit it. But they have no understanding of the, uh, the relationship of matter with spirit. So again, these, uh, these temples, they are for teaching that principle. Uh, in one way, there's no real need to build a big temple or even a small temple. Krishna can be worshipped completely and perfectly, especially in Kali Yoga, by chanting Hare Krishna. But materialistic people, uh, they don't recognize the value of chanting Hare Krishna. So when they see uh, beautiful, big buildings, then they become impressed. And they think, well, there must be something important here. Krishna is important. Our building a temple for him doesn't make him more important. But that draws attention to... The, to the, material, the materialistic people, their attention is drawn to the fact that Krishna is important. Bhotika vadi, bhotika vadi. They are, they only see the uh, that which is mundane. But then, when they when they see uh, beautifully constructed buildings, and they may be inclined to uh, listen to the devotees intelligently explain to them the need. Or, or, or the purpose of constructing a big building for worshipping he who is beyond matter. And how the elements of the temple, they are completely spiritual because they are directly used or, or directly engaged in Krishna's service. So please don't think that this is uh, this building a temple, it's just... Uh, Another kind of building. There are many different kinds of buildings, purpose-built buildings, office blocks, and then uh, condominiums, and then uh, gymnasiums, hospitals, schools. They're all designed with the function in mind. So this is another purpose-built building, but the purpose is far more important than any other kind of building. Because the purpose is to worship Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And we'll speak more about this in the upcoming evenings.